My friends, we are so blessed. Just look around you. Here we are in this beautiful sanctuary in which the walls are the perfect shade of creamy green and the chairs are wide and padded. Don't they feel comfortable to sit on? And our mission and our vision are painted on the walls and our view beyond the chancel is so precious with the mountain and the trees peering out behind our beautifully designed chalice right here. And just think of the countless hours and days of work that went into building this space specifically for us. Imagine the many visions and hands that built our spiritual home. Thoughtfulness and love went into every corner of this space, and I know many of you worked hard and took great care to make this sanctuary beautiful and comfortable as well as functional. What a blessing it is for us to get to meet here every week. Let's not take it for granted. In fact, when I was interviewing as your minister, the beauty and the good energy of these facilities was something that really impressed me. Your generous hearts, your capacities, your devotion and your vision shone through and are confirmed by these beautiful spaces. Okay, so now take a look more closely around you. Look around you at faces, at the faces around you, the faces that are familiar and some that may be new. Really look, I know it can be a little awkward looking left and right, but, <laughs> but take a look and see who's actually here with us. Take a look at the beauty and humanness in each one of our faces. There's a rich life story in every single one of us. Keep looking, there are stories etched into our wrinkles. There are stories. <laughs> there are stories told in our bodies, in our postures, and in our dress. There are stories pouring forth from our eyes. Look around and dare to look at each other's eyes. What beautiful, many beautiful eyes there are in this space. We've made it through good times and we've persevered through struggles, all of us. We've made it to this particular age. Whether we have wrinkles or aches and pains or not, here we are. And there's some of us amongst us who are even in our 90s. What a blessing is that? We've survived because life is not a given. As many of you know, it can end very suddenly at any time. We celebrated the life of our dear, dear Clay Peel yesterday, whose life ended so suddenly with barely a day's notice. But we have this precious moment right now. This moment that will never be repeated. We will never be here again exactly at this time, on this day, at this age, in these seats. This life of ours is a beautiful mystery. We don't know why we're here or for how long. Yet we have this gift, this gift of life. It's different for each one of us. The length of time we have on earth, the experiences we undergo, the challenges we face, the purpose that we discern we're here for, it's different for each of us. But this existence is a sacred opportunity, a wonder, a delight not to be squandered or taken for granted. We can't grasp this life or control it intellectually. We can't know what will happen in the next moment. Every day brings a new surprise, new interactions, new moments that have never happened before and will never happen again in just that way. In fact, as I was writing this, I looked out of my window and saw a beautiful little bird bathing in our fountain right outside the window. It was fluffing its feathers and delighting in the precious water and it was preening itself and shaking and playing and was so delighted. And then all of a sudden, it flew away. That precious moment was gone. It was there 
for that instant and that instant alone. And just as I was deepening my delight in observing it, it flew away. That moment will never come again in quite the same way, nor will any moment, whether we notice it or not. Every week when we share worship services, I'm aware that this service with its particular music, its rituals and message and its people in attendance will never happen again in just this way. It's an utterly unique experience that we share together every week. Even the two services are different because of the diverse people and the energies in the room. Completely different. We can all tell you who've been at both services, they really are very different. So let's just take a moment to breathe in gratitude for all of this. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable and take a deep breath. And I want you to notice the miracle of each breath. It means we are alive and we do nothing to make it happen. Our breath breathes us for as long as we are alive. So let's breathe in gratitude for our life, for our friendships and families, for this moment, for this fellowship, for this building and for our time together. Breathe in gratitude that we are alive today. We truly are so blessed. And when you're ready, please open your eyes again. Indeed, as we begin our Thanksgiving week, I hate to state the obvious, but what is Thanksgiving Day if it's not an opportunity to be grateful? I mean, it's about turkey and other things like that, but really... It's about being grateful, grateful for the abundance in our lives, grateful for each meal we get to partake in, grateful for our family with all of their various political views, <laughs> and grateful for friends who are there to rescue us from too much family of origin stuff, and grateful, <laughs> grateful for the liberties we still enjoy in this country. I'm particularly grateful for Hilary Rosen hosting a potluck Thanksgiving meal here at the fellowship for anyone who wishes. And I'm grateful for our interfaith Thanksgiving service this coming Wednesday with all different kinds of people and faiths gathering together to be grateful, overcoming differences. And I'm grateful for our Native American forefathers and foremothers who protected cultivated and lived on this land for generations before our pilgrim ancestors appeared. Grateful for the opportunity to reflect and take some time out of our day-to-day -day lives to be grateful and together. And grateful to focus on gratitude. Someone who spends most of his life Focusing on gratitude is Brother David Steindl Rast, an Austrian Benedictine monk. In fact, he recently turned 91 years old, so you can see being grateful could be good for your health. He's probably the world's leading expert on gratitude and is well known for having founded the Network for Grateful Living. And I invite you to check it out on gratefulness.org. Now, growing up during World War II in Austria, Brother David was surrounded by death and killing on a daily basis. Life was not a given. But he says he had a happy childhood and youth because they had to face the possibility of death at all times. So the joy of surviving was huge. The joy of being alive each day, living, mattered. After the war, he was drawn to the Benedictine order of monks because the rule of St. Benedict reminds monks to have death at all times before your eyes. To have death at all times before your eyes. 
And having experienced such an uncertain childhood, Brother David says, when you think you have little time to live, you come alive. So after toying with the idea for seven years, he became a Benedictine monk at the age of 26 in the U.S. and has remained a monk until this day. Gratefulness leads to happiness, he says. If you poll a large group of us, you know that most people just want to be happy. Anyone here want to be happy? <clears throat> I can safely say that's probably something most of us have in common. Most of our ways of being, our adaptations, our motives, are all developed as ways to bring us happiness, whether we consciously realize it or not. Yet so many are not happy, right? They may have wealth, power, and influence, They may have great marriages, children with lavish homes and cars, yet they still don't feel consistently happy. Steindl Rast and many other theologians believe that only gratefulness, sustained gratitude for the gift of life, can make us truly happy. And to live gratefully, we need to realize that every moment is a gift. We haven't earned it or brought it about, we haven't worked to make it happen. This moment, right now, is an opportunity. And this one, and this one. Every moment is a new gift. And we can either make the most of these opportunities or we can let them pass us by. But making the most of each moment's opportunity leads us to happy, grateful living. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. It's hard to feel grateful or make the most of every moment. We can't be grateful for everything we experience. What about war? What about exploitation? Or hunger? Or abuse? What about the degradation of the environment? What about divorce? Or what about violence or pain? or even the current situation in our country and world. And Brother David's response is, you can be grateful in every moment for the opportunity that this present moment offers you, the opportunity. And this is what he calls grateful living versus simple gratitude. Grateful living is when we're able to constantly reframe even the hardest, most challenging moments and find ways to be grateful. In his famous TED talk, he says, if you're grateful, you're not fearful. And if you're not fearful... You're not violent. If you're grateful, you act out of a sense of enough and not out of a sense of scarcity, and you're willing to share. And he says, if you're grateful, you enjoy the differences between people, and you are respectful to everybody. And that changes the power pyramid under which we live. And though it doesn't make for equality, it makes for equal respect. grateful for our differences. But my friends, it's easy to look for what's wrong. I confess I do it a lot. It's the janitor's dilemma. No one notices when the bathrooms are clean, but they only comment when they're dirty, right? It's easy to complain about life's disappointments. It's easy to find fault in one another. We all fall short and are perfectly imperfect creations, all of us. There are plenty of things to complain about in our own lives, in our government, in our news, in our current society, and so forth. And yes, it is important to stand up for equality, for fairness, for justice, and for change, but let's do so while we simultaneously acknowledge all the good there is in each one of us, while we also notice the blessings in every moment, the beautiful new day, 
Lynn asks me every Sunday, how was your drive here this morning? And it's stunning, driving along the ocean, seeing the sun rise over the mountains. We have this opportunity to gather with friends. We have warm bodies sitting near us. We have the chance to sing and be quiet. So what if we were to give more attention to all the little things in every moment that we're grateful for while continuing to stand up for what's just and what's good and what's right. I would like to see gratitude mentioned in our principles, our seven Unitarian Universalist principles. Gratitude for the gift of life and its mystery. I think it's a theological value that works for humanists and atheists, as well as for theists of all different kinds. Something along the lines of, we express gratitude for this mysterious existence and the lives we share, encouraging one another to look for what is good and what is whole. That might help our Unitarian perfectionist tendencies that look for the slightest wrong and help us instead to focus on what is working. There's so much good everywhere we look. And unfortunately, our news tends to focus only on the bad, so we have to work extra hard to lift up the good that is everywhere. Gratitude is not a weed. It doesn't grow naturally and abundantly. For most of us, it needs to be cultivated. It needs to be watered, fertilized, and grown within. And this is especially true for critical minds, my friends. Not that we have any here amongst us, but it needs to be practiced. Our instinctive fight or flight mechanisms often have us focus more naturally on that which is dangerous and that which we should fear. So cultivating gratitude, even in the face of difficult circumstances, is challenging. <coughs> Excuse me. It may go against our animal instincts. But if we believe in the power and beauty of gratitude and its ability to transform our lives and transform the world we live in, we must practice it if we are truly to learn it. I try to work on gratitude daily, bringing different gratitude practices into my life, just as Claudia shared with us that she does. Now, an alternative word for gratitude is appreciation. And when I've had a particularly hard day, it can be easy to want to complain or to try to escape from it by numbing out with a TV, watching the TV and drinking a glass of wine. But if I really want to change my mood, I sit down with my journal and I write down at least three things that I'm grateful for that day, often more. Three things that I appreciate in my life. And that shows me that even when times are tough, there are always good things to be found. And often at night, we'll gather in our son's room and all talk about what we're grateful for. And if we feel disconnected or grumpy with one another, which happens every now and then, this is a wonderful way to help us remember all the good in our lives. It's too easy to take the good for granted. But to truly become cognizant of it, we actually need to lift it up and remember it and offer appreciation for it. So in that light, my friends, we're now going to share in a ritual of gratitude, acknowledging the blessing of the food that nourishes our body. Our dear member, Christina Holberg, who loves to share her gift of baking and flower arranging, baked cornbread for us all today. And Claudia and Ani decorated this beautiful, beautiful altar here for us today. So this is going to be a moment 
to appreciate Christina and Claudia and Annie for all the work and love that they've put into this. And just as teff is an indigenous grain to the African continent and millet is indigenous to the Asian continent, corn is indigenous to the North American continent. And as we share our cornbread this morning, let us offer gratitude to our Native American ancestors who shared their wisdom and bounty with the pilgrims. They taught the Europeans how to grow and prepare corn. And though they were never thanked appropriately in return, they have given us the source of life. It's one of their many enduring legacies. As you pass the basket of cornbread to the person next to you, I invite you to turn to your neighbor and say, the bounty of the earth. Repeat after me, the bounty of the earth. And then as you receive that bounty, you say, thank you, thank you. As you eat your piece of cornbread, don't rush. Take a moment to truly savor the delicious flavor and the golden color. Send appreciation to those who grew the corn. Send gratitude to those who harvested. Thank those who prepared it for baking and those who made this bread for us today. Take a moment to appreciate the abundance in our lives and acknowledge the fact that most of us here have enough food to sustain us, which is not a given in this world. And take time to feel appreciation for the friends we all get to share it with. As you eat the bread, I, gen I remind you to gently bring to mind what you are thankful for. Say a number of things in your mind as you eat and digest this beautiful cornbread. And we also have a gluten-free option for anybody, and now that's another thing to be grateful for. I certainly am very grateful. So please raise your hand if you'd like that when it comes to that moment, and I will personally bring it to you. While we pass out the cornbread, we'll be playing a video called A Grateful Day by Brother David Steindl-Rost, who made this especially for us to celebrate gratitude. We offer you now the bounty of this earth. May it be blessed and may it bless us in sharing it.